paving is an integral part of any garden and the material can help to define or create a particular style or theme. Of course it's most commonly used on a patio which is there to blur the boundaries between indoors and out. There are lots of different materials that you can use. We're going to use this gorgeous natural limestone for a classic look. But you could use smooth concrete slabs in more practical areas or some creative paving for a more unique look. Now paving is hard work and you will need to save your back so remember to bend your knees and of course have a friend to help. First up, a little bit of planning. Are you going to have a large patio for entertaining or a smaller one, the perfect transition point between house and garden? Is it going to be in the sun or is it going to be in the shade? Is it going to be under a tree or out in the open? You could even draw a simple scale plan of your garden just to work out the best place for where the patio is going to go and just how big it should be. One centimetre on paper to 50 centimetres on the ground is fine. Do note the size required for your furniture and perhaps a barbecue too. We've marked out the area where our little patio is going to go using pegs and string lines and I'm now going to make sure that it's completely square by using a builder's square. Simply lay it on the ground to check. And then also as a little fail safe I'm going to measure the diagonals too. And if the two diagonal measurements are the same, it's also square. Once you're happy, it's then time to remove the turf using a spade. Work just outside the area you've marked out to give yourself a little bit of room. If you're laying slabs all of the same size, it's easy, there's no pattern. However, if you're using slabs of different sizes, it's a good idea to to sort of do a dry lay, find an area of the garden to lay out your slabs and work out your pattern beforehand because it is so much easier doing this than it is when you're dealing with mucky cement. And here's a good tip, once you're happy with your pattern, what you can do is number each of the slabs and then lay them in that sequence on the ground. Of course, what I often do is take a photograph of the pattern, blow it up on a big sheet of paper and then use that as a guide. It's, it's next to me as I'm laying the slabs. Basically, so you don't go wrong. Should we try that one in there? Once you've removed all your turf, you then need to start thinking about your foundation. Now here, I need to dig down 125 millimetres. That's 50 millimetres for the sub-base, which basically stops our patio from doing that. The slabs themselves are 25 millimetres thick and I need a 50 millimetre mortar bed, 125 millimetres in total. I thought I'd set up a little demonstration to show you the various levels that you're going to be using and the depths of the material and it's important that you get this right. First up, we dug down 125 millimetres, removing the turf and of course the soil underneath. We then added on to that 50 millimetres of sub-base material. Now I prefer using this rather than just, well, crushed hardcore because it's really easy to get it really compact and that's key. Now at home you can use a vibrating plate compactor if it's a fairly large site or you can use a piece of wood and a sledgehammer. On top of that we then added in about centimetre, two centimetres, just to blind off this sub-base of sharp sand. Now you might be wondering what all these pegs are for, but these are really crucial. We're building a patio by a house here, so it's essential that we set a fall away from the house, so that water doesn't run down and collect by the base of the walls. So what we've done is simply knock the pegs in and using a spirit level, just worked out the heights we want with this fall in mind. I'm halfway through laying our little patio here. Let me talk you through what I've done so far. The first slab is always the one by the house. If you've got the house wall square, and you can check that of course with the builder square, you can then lay that first slab with that in mind. You get that in perfect and you're off. 
that's, that's our sort of guide slab as well for the levels. It's the highest point of the whole patio and the whole thing is pitching down towards me and away from the house so of course water isn't sitting by the walls. Now if you had uniform slabs of the same size you might decide to work in rows once you've set in that guidance slab but here because we're laying a random rectangular pattern I'm having to sort of work diagonally in rows if that makes sense using of course the photograph that I took of the dry laid slabs as my guide. Now here we're using a technique known as five spotting you can lay a full mortar bed and lay your slabs on that, but we're using a five spot method, which is very straightforward. Quite simply, it involves popping five dollops of cement where your slab is gonna go, and then simply bedding the slab down on top and then of course using a spirit level to make sure it's level with the one adjacent to it. Now the mortar that we're using is five parts sand to one part cement and it's important that you get that ratio right so mix it up in small amounts. Some slabs are big and heavy so you will need two people to carry them. And don't forget to always wear protective gloves and knee pads. Now ordinarily you should never really walk on the slabs that you've just freshly laid for at least 24 hours but in the event that you do then put down a big board to really spread your weight. Filling in the joints is of course the final job to do after you finish laying your paving. You will need to wait at least 24 hours for the paving slabs to dry because you've got to walk all over them. It's quite a simple process but do take your time because it's this that will just give it that, that professional finish. What I've got here is just a five and one mix of sharp sand and cement. But you'll notice that it's really, really dry and this is important. You want a little bit of water in it but not enough so that when you put the pointing mix on the slab that it will stain it. The process is quite simple. Simply overfill and then working along each joint with a pointing tool, simply work it in, packing it down as you go. I'm really ramming it in there because it has to fill the voids which have been left behind from our five spots of sand cement underneath. So I'm really ramming it in there. And then using an old paintbrush, a dry one of course, we then just brush the excess away and into our next joint. And if you do find that your mortar mix is just a little bit too wet, just have a damp sponge on hand, just in case. If you do mix up your own pointing mix, there are a number of dyes available that you can add into the mix. And these are useful because then you can match the pointing colour to your paving colour or use a different one for contrast. You don't even need to mix up your own mortar. There are a number of products that you'll find in your local store, Payfix being one of them. 